very next speaker I know is long awaited by many of you, myself included, so I won't make you wait any longer. It is my pleasure to introduce Lucian Greaves. spoken on the topics of Satanism, secularism, the Satanic Temple at UC universities throughout the United States. Mission, Arkansas welcomes you. Thank you. I feel I have to comment on the comic relief of these flabby old men who fashion themselves a master race. They may not be fine physical specimens, but they're not fine intellectual specimens either. Nor were they able to rally a good counter rally. But I'm sure your mommies thought you were handsome, little boys. People of Arkansas and supporters of religious liberty, I present to you Baphomet, a symbol of pluralism, legal equality, tolerance, free inquiry, freedom of conscience, and reconciliation. We did not bring Baphomet here in hopes of replacing the Ten Commandments monument. It is not the purpose of our monument or our efforts to erect this monument to impugn or silence the beliefs of others. Despite what you have probably heard, the truth is the Satanic Temple never asked for the Ten Commandments monument to be taken down, nor do we ask that Baphomet be erected to the exclusion of any other monuments of religious significance. In fact, from the beginning we were clear. We only want our monument on public grounds where other monuments of religious significance are pre-existing. We have as little interest in forcing our beliefs and symbols upon you as we do in having the beliefs of others forced upon us. What we are asking for is only that the public square, these capital grounds, remain an area in which free speech, religious liberty, and equality under the law be respected by the holders of public office who swore to uphold those values. This is not a protest against the Ten Commandments. This is not a protest of Satanists against Christians. This is not a protest of secularists against believers. This is a rally for reason in the face of prejudice, progress in the face of decline, liberty in the face of rising theocracy, and toleration in the face of infantile tribalisms. This is an opportunity for us to stand together whatever our differences amongst ourselves and stand up for the principles that allow for a free exchange of ideas and the free exercise of religious convictions. It has been said that there is no greater tyranny than that which is perpetrated under the shield of the law and in the name of justice. And I contend that among legally sanctioned tyrannies, none is greater than that which would deny one the liberty to freely follow one's own conscience, to reach one's own determination regarding one's religious convictions, that would deny one the self-determination to stand up for, with equal voice, one's deeply held beliefs. Conviction enforced by coercion is subjugation. It has also been said that when tyranny comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and carrying a cross. This is because the tyrant knows that through fear he can manipulate a people away from their principles, so long as he appropriates the proper symbols, repeats the appropriate sound bites, and claims to represent a purer form of the values he manipulates, deforms, and ultimately inverts. Today's theocrat won't tell you he demands your subjugation. He'll redefine subjugation as freedom. Religious freedom as a license to discriminate against those who live different lives or simply don't share the same beliefs. Other viewpoints, regardless of their content, become redefined as an attack upon the sanctioned viewpoint. Senator Rapert will tell you that our monument is an attack upon Christianity. But then Senator Rapert also once described a gay pride parade as one of the most offensive displays against Christians in an attempt to intimidate people who believe in the word of God. These are not the words of a man with the maturity of mind to act with the sense of detached jurisprudence befitting of a public office holder. Woo! 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 
Senator Rapert will tell you that his Ten Commandments monument is not a religious monument, rather it is a monument celebrating the heritage and history of American law. If he were to make this claim in earnest, it would indicate that he is as unqualified to hold the title of minister as he is to hold the office of senator. <laughs> to be sure, the senator reduces the Decalogue from the sacred to the historical in an attempt to shield it from claims of religious preference and litigation. However, it is a dishonest move that is an insult to both the Ten Commandments and American history and heritage. In fact, the Ten Commandments find no reference in American law, and the first four directly contradict the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Thou shalt have no gods before me as a theocratic fiat, establishing in no uncertain terms that one religion shall be tolerated, a direct prohibition upon constitutionally protected free exercise. Thou shalt not make thee any graven images as a commandment that is humorously defied by the erection of the Ten Commandments monument itself. <laughs> It is also a burden upon constitutionally protected free expression. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain as an affront to constitutionally protected free speech and keep the Sabbath holy is also a theocratic demand that accepts only one religious viewpoint. The rest of the commandments where they are common law are neither unique nor original to the Decalogue and many non-believers or practitioners of non-Abrahamic faiths might take exception to a crime like murder being placed in equal magnitude with blaspheming or fail to, failing to recognize a supposedly holy day. But there is a more charitable way to view the Ten Commandments, one that does not cause acrimony and division, one that does not oppress, offend, or violate democratic pluralistic values. And that is by seeing these divine regulations as by and for the practitioners of their faith alone. If by one's own free will one decides they share the faith of Senator Rapert, and by true conviction maintain their faith by retaining their fidelity to one God before whom they shall have no others, if they dutifully observe the Sabbath and treat it with holy reverence, if they view the Ten Commandments as a type of personal guidance that informs the practice of their own faith, then this is a Ten Commandments of religious conviction, not coercive legislation. To those of us for whom the Ten Commandments hold no spiritual significance, their exclusive endorsement by the government, their placement in public display on public grounds, is nothing short of a state-sponsored declaration of our second-class status, an unconstitutional violation of our religious freedom, and an assault upon our guarantee of free exercise. <laughs> Senator Raper opposes religious liberty. Those who hold the Ten Commandments sacred in their personal spiritual lives should be as offended by an exclusive monument to them placed in the public square as anybody for whom those commandments are in direct contradiction to their beliefs, and maybe more so. These are their sacred tenets, abused for political gain, trivialized as a legal document. Senator Raper will tell you that the placement of his monument on the Capitol grounds is, in part, justified by images of the Ten Commandments on display within the Supreme Court of the United States. What the Senator fails to mention is that the Decalogue is nowhere listed inside the Supreme Court in representations of a stone tablet whereupon are inscribed the Roman numerals 1 through 10, often mistaken as representative of the Ten Commandments, were in fact described by the artist as representative of the Articles of the Bill of Rights. Where Moses is represented within the court, he is depicted alongside many great lawgivers of history, including Hammurabi, Napoleon, Confucius, and Muhammad, to name but a few. Nor is Moses central among them. It is in the spirit of pluralism and government viewpoint neutrality that above the steps of the Supreme Court, the words equal justice under law are boldly displayed. In fact, the Supreme Court has consistently upheld that where religious public expressions are allowed for some, it must be allowed for all. <laughs> Senator Raper will tell you that a United States Supreme Court decision from 2005, Van Orden versus Perry, which allowed for a contested Ten Commandments monument to remain on public grounds in Austin, Texas, justifies the exclusive placement of his Ten Commandments monument here on Little Rock Capitol grounds. What the Senator fails to mention is that on the same day as that decision was handed down, the Supreme Court ruled against two standalone Ten Commandments monuments, only preserving the one in Austin on the grounds that it was a 40-year-old landmark and, importantly, that it was displayed alongside a number of other monuments with no evidence of viewpoint discrimination. In denying other monuments of religious significance in Little Rock, the state can no longer claim Van Orden versus Perry as justification for the Ten Commandments monument, and in fact, the precedent supports our claim. Our claim that the state is obligated to accept Baphomet at the Capitol grounds. 
To be clear, when the public grounds are open to private donations from one religious viewpoint, the public grounds are open to private donations from any religious viewpoint. This is what religious liberty means. You may be uncomfortable with Satanists on the Capitol grounds, but it was Senator Rapert who, by his efforts to open the Capitol to religious monuments, tacitly invited us here. That's right. To be clear, the Ten Commandments monuments standing on the Capitol grounds to the exclusion of other privately donated monuments of religious significance is illegal. According to the Arkansas State Constitution, no preference shall ever be given by law to any religious establishment denomination, or mode of worship above any other. The binary elements of the Baphomet, the animal and the human, the gesture above, the gesture below, pentagrams both inverted and upright, all signifies that which is embodied in the central caduceus, reconciliation and negotiation. Baphomet on the same grounds as the Ten Commandments does not represent a conflict, but a resolution. Baphomet would legalize the Ten Commandments and uphold First Amendment principles. A failure to accept Baphomet will surely result in a legal ruling demanding the Ten Commandments monument be taken down. Yeah. <laughs> Human progress is undeniable. For the past 500 years, we have increasingly lived longer, healthier lives. Increasing literature, literacy, and access to education has contributed to an ever-improving quality of life, while democratic forms of government that respect equal rights become the dominant norm for world civilization. War-related deaths are at an all-time historic low, while scientific progress eradicates maladies that once held us in their mercy and finds ways to overcome the scourge of famine. However, the oppressive shackles of superstition still hold fast to a significant number of minds, and from fear they fight hard against the progress of the centuries desperately reaching backward it for a time in which so little was known, but answers seem far clearer. Theocrats like Senator Rapert, and by their spineless failure to check Rapert's unconstitutional behavior, the majority of the Arkansas government as well, would see us return to dark age feudalism where autocrats would demand fealty and tolerance for alternative views, would be viewed in, as collusion with enemies of the state. But the progress of civilization won't be stopped, and once better ways are seen and accepted, they cannot be unseen and forgotten, even as we must fight against attempted roadblocks placed in our path. The progress of humanity and the rights revolutions are clear, but we need to stand up now if we wish to see this progress fully realized in our lifetimes. We need to fight back against encroaching theocracy and refuse to be silenced when petty peddlers of fear and superstition slowly reduce our rights while expanding their own. We need to look them in the face and tell them that we will not submit and that we will fight them every step of the way. We represent enlightenment values, universal values of tolerance, scientific inquiry, and personal autonomy. These are human values. If would-be theocrats are to oppose these values with hostility, while we as Satanists are sworn to uphold them, and as these values continue to win the day and define civilized ethics, the Christianity created by theocrats in opposition to humanity will breed revolt and will swell the ranks of Satanists worldwide in unity for a new enlightenment. If Christianity abandons liberal democracy, it will have forfeited the future to Satan. <laughs> to which I say, Hail Satan! Hail Satan!